And welcome back, everybody. We're preparing for our final series of the day as we have Evil Geniuses Academy taking on Hunter Thieves Academy. And again, another pretty uh, high impact playoff potential match here is Hunter Thieves. Now looking at Team Liquid, nipping at their heels. They got to put up now against Evil Geniuses, a team that historically has a reputation of being able to go at least one and one against pretty much everybody in the field. So, Cubby, first thoughts on this matchup. What should we be expecting? Uh, let's start with Hunter Thieves' side and just kind of talk through their team identity so far because they haven't looked as good in the summer uh, second half. Yeah, so I caught up with Coom before the match about, you know, like what's what do you feel like is going on with the team? And he kind of credited it as he thinks that a lot of the academy teams have actually caught up, improved their play, and that they just haven't had, maybe it's not the best read, maybe it's just a couple games not going their way. Um, they realize that, you know, they have a losing record in the last couple weeks, uh, but mm -hmm. they're still set on the fact that they feel like they can be a team that is one of the strongest teams in academy. I think Golden Glue, uh, with an earlier interview he gave us this year, saying that he wished they could unveil the LCS scrim record that they had because uh, they were playing very well as a team, and uh, Poom's confident that him and his squad can return to that form and have a tough test against EG, who... They are known as the 1-1 one, one specialists, but they've been breaking that streak with some 2-0s and some improved cleaner play coming out from them. And they are currently uh, in fourth place. I mean, obviously, they haven't played uh, their series. This is the last series of the day, so 100 Thieves and EG are a little bit further down than we'd expect. But currently, only two games behind the Thieves. So if EG can also win this 2-0... That's adding another name into the mix for that top two conversation. Yes. So depending on the performances here, there's actually a lot on the line for both of these teams. It, it, it's very important that 100 Thieves, they've secured a playoff spot, but they haven't secured a top two seed like FlyQuest. So yes. they need to get some wins on the table. And if you're EG, I, I believe they need at least one or two wins this week to make sure that they uh, secure that playoff spot as well. So mm -hmm. I, this is a series that between two pretty tough uh, Academy rosters, I know that this was the third, fourth place match that we had in Proving Grounds last split, and both teams have looked in good form at points throughout the season. So really excited to watch these players clash, and especially Kenby versus Contracts. As this is Contracts last week playing at Academy, as he will join the LCS roster full-time after this week. And going up against Kenby, this is a matchup that has always delivered for us. Mm -hmm. Can be one of the best up-and-comer junglers that we've had. Uh, one of the newer faces to the Academy scene, starting for 100 Thieves Academy last year, uh, coming fresh in from the 100 Thieves Next program. Contracts, he's played in LCS, he's played in Academy, and he's looking really good this year. I'm excited to see what he's able to do in the LCS as that sixth man mm -hmm. on the Evil Geniuses roster. Having him and Sven Skarin together gives him a lot in LCS. And now yeah, you're right, this is kind of his swan song performance in Academy to really... Def find or de definitively say why he's being promoted up until the SCS and uh, also give Antonio a hard axe to follow as well potentially so let's see what they're able to do here as we are into picking fans 100 Thieves on the blue side evil geniuses on the red and uh, just touching on that contracts note like one more point I mean it, it's so well deserved for him and he's 3-0 mm -hmm. on the LCS stage with Diana uh, for EG two of those wins coming up against TSM as he is kind of that weapon X they've been using uh, when they have to and of course, I mean, the goal for all these teams is to get their all CS squads to Worlds, as both these organizations are looking to do so. And good to see EG mm -hmm. kind of dig down in their talent pool. You guys are Academy fans and haven't seen Tomio play. Really excited for you to watch uh, Tomio play. That kid has freakish hands, and his stream, Selfless Plug, is one of the best streams I ever watched on Twitch. It is so funny. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tomio. He's, he's a good kid. Um, we're I haven't been able to tune into any of his streams. Now man. I gotta, I gotta go give him a check. It is, it's something else, man. It's, it's so funny. It's a lot of uh, LCS pro junglers kind of razzing him. Uh, it's, it, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they treat him. Tomio is like the up and coming prospect, right? You gotta take him under your wing a little bit. Sure. Yeah, a little bit of tough love, a little bit of fun love, but uh, rib him a little bit here and there. Make sure he doesn't get too big yeah, of an exactly. ego, right? Well, exactly. Let's catch up on the band so far here. Hundred thieves. Focusing on Ziggs, they're taking away that Diana, so Contracts will not get that one this game. And the Yas, so notably Nidalee, it's on the table, Contracts likes that one. And they prioritize Syndra as blue one. So, I tease Syndra buffs. Uh, this is a, a real power pick, though, coming out from 100 Thieves. And I think that the reason that Syndra is b one is that you can flex it with Luger. So I'm curious to see where they end up mm. slotting that Syndra, as of course uh, they reverted. Uh, a nerf that they had the Cindera long ago with the mana pool. So her Q level 1 is now 40 mana instead of 60. 
Big difference mm -hmm. for that early lane phase that really allows you to spam out that ability. It doesn't have a channel, too, so Cinder is very mobile, very strong level 1 once again. EG are going to respond with uh, what looks to be a Varus and a Viego that makes a lot of sense. Viego being yeah. a, a three-way flex still, even though it's weaker in solo lanes this patch. And Varus being the perennial power pick bot, especially with Ziggs and Callisto off the table. And I will say that we haven't seen Luger on a mage yet in all of summer, so... I don't know if they would actually flex that Syndra onto Luger. Uh, maybe they've been screaming it. Maybe they've been practicing it. Too. There we go. It's been hovered right here. 400 Thieves in Italy. But no, instead the Lee Sin locked in. So potentially still a solo laner. More likely a jungler. We've been seeing it kind of pushed into that role. Same with the Viego here. And uh, 100 Thieves, if they lock in that gallery, that'd be a very unique draft. Not holding the gallery as a flex pick because of that Syndra. But they're they're playing with us right now, hovering a couple of different things. I, I think set is something else they, they could opt for, but I think they want to hold on to some of those picks, and they're just going to take an AD that can match the Varus, as mm -hmm. uh, will be Ezreal or Luger in the bot lane. And moving forward, 100 Thieves, we've seen the Cinder of Lee Sin mid-jungle duo, FlyQuest piloting that in game one versus TL. It didn't work out the best in their favor, uh, but looking to turn the tides for 100 Thieves is... It's one of Ryoma's best champions in his career, and Ken Beasley Sin's always very scary to watch. So, let see what EG walks in here, as there's no way it's said. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, going? I, was, I was getting a little bit scared there, as uh, Jojo Pion always likes to flash those mechanics. And also, catching up with Jojo Pion before this series, a uh, very young player, if you are an Academy fan, a 16-year-old talent, gave his first interview a couple weeks ago. Uh, catching up with him, mm -hmm. he said, eh, that was pretty fun. Uh, if you didn't check it out, go back. I believe it was two weeks ago. A very well-spoken young man. And um, I asked him about contracts leaving and kind of filling in the jungle role with a new talent. He said, you know, contracts has taught me so much about early game and jungling and really feels like we work well as a team. Uh, so he's bummed to see him go, but it's well-deserved for contracts, realizing that it's going to help his team uh, hopefully make worlds, as that is EG's aspirations. And Looking forward to working with a new jungler, uh, for, as Tomio will be playing with them for uh, most likely Academy playoffs. But EG is still to secure a few wins here to make that happen. Yeah, let's see if EG can make that happen. It's seeming likely based on their performance so far in the summer, but hey, you can never call it too soon. Catching up on the picks, though, Jojo Pion will still get to flex some mechanics here on that LeBlanc in the mid lane, matched up against the Syndra. Been a while since we've seen... This kind of be the meta. LeBlanc and Syndra coming in together here, but the band's coming out. Under Thieves, respecting Tony Tops' Jax. He did pilot this last week against Viper's Ribbon and uh, looked very scary on that. But EG Academy instead banding out these supports. So Aurelia is still up, and Tenacity is an Aurelia one trick uh, way back in solo queue with when he was originally climbing the ladder. Jax is a, a, a debated counter into Aurelia. And I'm curious mm. if Hunter Thieves are maybe setting up an Aurelia pick for Tenacity as they will take the strongest support off the table as EG were setting up for a Nautilus on 4. We'll have to choose something different. I'd love to see a set pick here, potentially. Uh, it's not bad into a, a, a Lee Sin, and they could use that as a double flex with the Viego to kind of flex between Mystique's sure. at support and Tony Top uh, in the top point as well. But it looks like Mystique's might be going back to his old faithful Alistar as with all the supports off the table, Alistar is pretty good here. It is very strong, offers engage, and keep in mind that Viego is still also a flex between jungle and the top lane. So Evil Geniuses, despite not having the double flex right now, they still do uh, hold their cards close to their chest. Now 100 Thieves, they'll have to choose their support, and then they'll have to choose, do they put Lee Sin into that solo lane, or do they want to match the Lee Sin against the Viego and the jungle here? Yumi's He's being good. hovered. Oh, no, you're right! You had the read! Despite the uh, slight nerfs coming in, Aurelia is locked in for the Thieves. Uh, Set's a really good matchup into Aurelia. It's another one of the reasons that I was kind of teasing that on 4. Might be an option for Tony Top, as him and Contracts have some choices to make. Under Thieves need to pick their support. Uh, Yumi, unironically, is actually pretty good into this team comp. Uh, Under Thieves, they need to find some sort of engage that can help out with Kenby, I think. Uh, and I'm curious to see what Poom ends up opting for. And it's going to be a reliable Ooh. recon. So... I like this when you have melees on your team. I, I always talk about using the quickness and then the E shield to kind of uh, piggyback off of someone already going in. Then you can land the W from there. As Tony Top has his choice to counter into Aurelia. And uh, we're going to have to see what he ends up going for as this is something that Tenacity is known for. And the one play that he had, he had a five-man ultimate that set up for a quadra kill for him in one of the first games that we cast this Academy season. 
Yeah, that was an incredible play right there before the nurse came through, and we have the skill okay. matchup. Gauntlet thrown, Fiora for Tony Top. All right, top win, all eyes on there. It's going to be fun. I want to see both junglers pathing up to try and help each top winner get ahead, as this is an extremely volatile matchup. And when you have Ezreal and Varus in the bot lane, it enables the supports to get involved as well. So we're going to have to see which team can kind of top lane Kingdom a little bit better. I still think that Hunter Thieves have a little bit more flexibility to get their support around the map. Can be dangerous to leave a Varus alone because Rakan can look to engage. So maybe even slightly favoring them in that department. I thought it was going to be about mid lane matchup. Because keep in mind, we also still have Syndra versus LeBlanc, which depending if either of them can get an early kill, can swing that matchup too. But now the top lane, wow, the solo lanes will be so important for this game. But it isn't cool to see that Viego is actually going into the jungle role this time around for contracts. Known more for his AP junglers, but let's see what we can do on this champ. And for EG, uh, I think kind of taking the Aurelia down a peg or two early is going to help them a lot because the Blanc mm -hmm. and Varus, it, it enables you to stack early dragons pretty easily as you have a lot of early power, a lot of early poke with those two champions, especially at the one item spike. And so if, if they can take Tenacity uh, uh, down once or twice in the top lane and kind of open up that win condition for them, they could get a very big advantage across this rift early. Whereas for 100 Thieves, I think they really need Tenacity to be successful in this top lane. And they're giving him the champion that he is known for in a matchup that uh, if he knows how to win in a railway match, if anyone knows how to win in the railway matchup, it's Tenacity. <laughs> so I, I want to see if he kind of can find the tech to win this with Aurelia being reworked a little bit, of course, in the last patch. And already opting for a Dorn shield tells me that he already knows a few things that we don't. I just love the fact that Tony Top is not scared of the tenacity of Aurelia. He's willing to play this crazy skill matchup here where the Fiora... I mean, you're strong, like you said, if you can get online, but if you're behind this Fiora, you don't offer much to the team. Yeah, you can try and look to group up in team fights, get those vital packs, and hopefully heal up. But if you're not threatening kills on anybody, you're kind of worthless. You're uh, also, I believe, slightly nerfed. Actually, it might not have been this last patch. I think it was its next patch that she's getting a, a little bit extra time added on her E. So I'll hold off judgment there. You can still split push regardless. But catch up on what the junglers are wanting to do here, getting Ooh. us away from that top lane matchup since we'll watch it play out. We see both junglers starting on the bottom side, one with a leash, one without. And importantly, Kenvi will be spotted by this ward. I think Tony Top was trading in front of the wave a little bit, but with the Dorn Shield, Tenacity does win the War of Attrition in that matchup if he prevents the vitals from being procced by Fiora. And as we expected, both junglers pathing Top early. Going to be a full clear for contracts as he will take the Wolves, and Kenvi will be skipping over the Krug, so he will get to the top side of the map first if Hunter Thieves want to take any action up there. But Tony Top will know this. Because again, that ward oh mistakes. Flash! Pulverize headbutt onto Luger. That means flash out of the Ezreal as well. Aggression from Team Luke. Now they know that there's no heal. That's a teleport on Ezreal. That's first blood to Team Luke. Set up by Mystiques. Beautifully done. Utilizing that early power spike and also taking advantage of the fact that Luger doesn't have a combat summoner. He has TP. So uh, EG punishing that fact, and when Luger doesn't flash over that wall, he wasn't able to execute the Dyer's Flash. I think that's the only way he was going to be able to get out of that one cleanly. He wasn't able to do that, ends up going down, and Tenacity has a double advantage in the top lane. Ooh, doesn't hit the flawless duet, Tony Top. It's so many small away. things in this matchup, too. Look at how the Vital was on the right side of Aurelia, and he was positioning against the wall. That's the level mm -hmm. these guys are going to be playing at in this 1v1, as the micromanagement is going to be so important from those two champions and those two players trying to pilot these very high skill cap champions. Ones that they've proved that they can pilot in the long run, but will have to prove in this game as they both decided to throw down the gauntlet. Aurelia, Tenacity's favorite pick, the one that he's known for. He's pushing to the top side. Low on mana. I think Tenacity will go for a reset here as Tony yeah. Top hopes to just freeze the wave in front of his turret. Both junglers were nearby. So yeah, Tenacity, you got to get out of this lane at this point in time. We'll come back to lane with a long sword. Let's see if he opts to teleport or not, as Ujipion does go for that early back for the Dark Seal and teleports immediately back into the mid lane. That will get the bottom scuttle here for contracts. I really like how Ryoma is playing out this matchup. As you could see, he was actually leaving a ball on where the block would, would be dashing back to and saves the Scatter of the Week for that moment to kind of guarantee that it lands. 
Uh, it's a tough game. You have to play in this matchup, Syndra LeBlanc, because you can use that scatter to try and cancel a distortion coming out of the block. But the fact that he's leaving a ball kind of back at that angle guarantees that he's always going to catch JoJo and enables Ryoma to go even in this matchup as Syndra was an old-school counter to LeBlanc, but now uh, definitely a skill matchup in the mid lane. It's the shove in the mid lane. Now Ryoma will go for another reset here. Second already of the game as he went for a reset and teleported in. So Dark Seal picked up. Has a little more AP in his pocket here. Not a lot of action early on other than the 2v2 bot side. So 100 Thieves, they do just keep power farming for their jungler. Not really finding that much of a lead for themselves anywhere on the map. So other than Tenacity, with the CS advantage top side just hard shoving in here. Seems like the bottom half will be in favor of Evil Geniuses. You talked already earlier on the day, the importance of Varus being able to control the bot lane for these dragon stacks. Wouldn't be too surprised to see Evil Geniuses focus on these early on. They do have a shove here, but because Jojo Pion is low mana with no corrupting potion stacks, they don't feel like they can go for it. They might actually open up a window for the thieves to go for it if they want, but I think they're going to help Tenacity continue to play aggressive in that top lane. As Ryan was in a very good job of managing this matchup in the mid lane. Uh, Showing why B1 Cindero is a powerful option for 100 Thieves because historically this is one of Ryoma's best champions. It's very good on Syndra. It's cool that we get a preview of it too before, you know, LCS, LEC this weekend, these other big regions that will probably also be pulling out the Syndra and showing us this as well. Those buffs, they do bring her back into viability. Now Ryoma showing us what she can do. We saw her played earlier today, didn't pick up the win, but still... Rides a lot of burst damage in a pretty good laning phase. Goes for the third reset now. Ryoma just getting out of lane every possible time that he can. And now back onto the map, but still no early focus on the dragon. It's been up for a minute now, and neither team have even looked at it. So let's talk about now instead kind of the, the next plan, the next play for either of these teams. We haven't fully identified which one of them wants to scale, which one of them wants to pull the trigger early on. So when you're looking at these compositions, who are you favoring at this state of the game and who are you favoring the later it goes? I, I think as this game goes on, I, I would rather be in the position of 100 Thieves because you have options that can counter the block. Aurelia wins both side lanes if she gets ahead. And I must block because Ryoma is caught out. Does have help from Poom. Good hover coming out from the support of 100 Thieves. Uh, I, I think that for EG, I think the dragon stacking is going to be rather important here, but it seems like they're stalling it out to try and help Tony top in this match a little bit. He lands a nice stun. and Oh, yeah. The great challenge. Help. Contracts is here, too. Tenacity's in some trouble here. Stacking up the passive. Goes on to Contracts. Gets Flash out of Viego, but Jojo Pion's here as well. He just goes for Tenacity <laughs> with the outplay in a 1v3. Picks up a kill. This guy's so disgustingly good at Aurelia, able to trade out. It's still a huge advantage for EG, uh, but hey, they lose a point to Ryama, who might be in trouble. Mystique's does sidestep that. Moby Boots will be proc as he hits the wave, but oh my goodness, the fact that Tenacity is just able to trade out, this is one of the reasons why so many people are excited about this top laner in Academy, because he can make plays that no one else can see, and on this Aurelia, one champ that he's known for, he's able to do it here. And he doesn't even get hard punished because that's not a plate taken by Tony Top. So it's not like the Fiora is going to get uh, further ahead in this matchup either. Instead, we see that actually 100 Thieves get the first play onto the Dragon. Can be realizing, hey, there's a lot of people from Evil Genius' top side. Either they're walking down here now or they're resetting. Opting for them to go for that reset. Contracts is dead. So correct read from Can be. It's a Dragon pretty much uncontested. So I don't even know if we can say that that's in favor of EG at the end of the day. Because they didn't get much more than just the trade of kills. There's a plate picked up by Ryoma in the mid lane. There's a dragon picked up now for the Thieves. They're finding ways into this, but let's watch this again. Uh, so, first off, he waits out uh, the ultimate from Fiora. And then he kind of catches Ooh. the stun from Contracts, but gets the Q buffer through. And now, like, once JoJo shows up, he's going down. But the fact that he weaves in the autos and actually flashed away to dodge an auto attack from Diego after he puts his through... Guarantees the fact he gets kill and at least gets out for now. I will also down, say, but, oh my. Contracts are two turret shots there. He didn't wait for yeah. the wave. I think he, he expected the wave to crash a little bit faster. If he didn't take those turret shots, that's a very different play. So Tenacity taking advantage of a mistake from Contracts. And uh, hey, rewarded for it. Yeah, Even that, that is true. Kill. 
He was setting that up as he was holding the wave as Aurelia can with just the power of the Q and all the healing she's asked to in her kit. And healing, the big name of the game in this top lane matchup is he has heal cut and healing himself as it looks like you're just rushing towards that core drink. Ooh. Nicely engaged by Mystiques right there. Goes in onto Luger, catches Poom He's instead. Here. Tenacity could be in trouble. Actually, no, it's Tony Top that's in trouble because that's Kenvy here for the gank. Tony Top flashes away and Kenvy backs off as the grand challenge has been issued. And Kenvy does not want to take that 1v2. So given the fact that Alt was burned by Tenacity, and Jojo Pion does have shove mid. This does guarantee Rift Herald for EG, a big pickup with low investment from them. As a bit of a swap coming out from both teams, as I, I was expecting EG to be able to dragon stack with the Varus, but uh, still, the focus on top lane, very important. And he's still here. returning. JoJo's here. He's driving around. There's no here. ultimate yeah. up your this time. Kenby just commits the kick immediately. Tony Top's dead before his team can answer. JoJo Piana contracts were in the neighborhood, but not close enough. Really well done by Kenby. Just hitting the right timer. They knew that JoJo and contracts were in the zip code, but they were able to sneak around the right streets, get around them, deliver the pizza before they can get back to their front door. <laughs> It's like when you're trying to sneak out and you know your mom's coming home at some point. You're like, all right, I got to take this street because I know her path yeah. back. I got to make sure she doesn't spot me leaving the house. I th these kids are still in high school. So, you know, it's something that's important for them. I actually believe that Tenacity and Kenby did actually just graduate high school. I have my facts straight there. Oh, nice. Uh, so, you know, still, still, still. Yeah, I got to get that practice sometimes. When you, when oh, you I feel old. Get out, see the friends. Yeah. Well, 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 there was a stat that you told me recently that kind of blew my mind. What was it? Danny has been playing since he was six years old. Was that it? Uh, not six. I believe he was eight. Eight. But still stupid. Okay. Yeah. Um, one wow. of the reasons that he is uh, very good on the LCS stage. Keeping it in theme with the teams we have here, as it is, of course, EG versus you know, Hunter Thieves. Two teams. That's my that... new excuse. That's my new excuse. Yeah. The only okay. reason that I'm not a pro player is that I did not start at eight years old. Uh, in fact, I started when I already had Boomer Mechanics at... Uh, Actually, I started at 19. I don't know if that counts, but <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it makes you feel better, right? It's, it's the right amount of copium that we need. As uh -huh. turning into the game state, trade of flights going on across the map. Tony Top going to get one for himself, one going over to Luke Ezreal. And overall, uh, just because this volatile top lane matchup is going towards Tenacity at the start, and the fact that he's going from Boy to the Rune King, the dedicated split push build, to try and continue to win this matchup, I think that 100 Thieves feel okay about where this game state is at the moment. But Tenacity, the spider senses are tingling. That control ward gets swapped out, and EG they're sending for. Mystiques is up here too. Tenacity doesn't know that, but could enter a guess. As Mystiques and Contracts both decide to back out. Tony Top does not have the assistance to dive onto Tenacity, nor would they have wanted to, as Poom and Kenby were both there. Evil Genius is backing off. Dragon's up in 50 seconds. Evil Genius is running straight down to the bottom river. They're actually pinging the bot lane too. They might just go from a top dive attempt to a bot dive attempt. And yeah, Boom's all alone, or Luger's all alone down here. Flash oh. aggression from Contracts. Gets onto Luger, gets flashed out of Ezreal. That means Luger has to back off of this wave. EG, they still have Shelly. They have the option to drop it and try and get a couple fights and maybe threaten the dragon. But because of that play, the uh, commitment of members in the bot lane, 100 Thieves, they did get mid lane priority. You know, three members in the river. The scary part of 100 Thieves is look at the bot side jungle. Because EG just spent time making that highway from top to bot, they have three teleport wards that Jojo Pion could use to create mm -hmm. an angle if they want to go for this next dragon. And EG... Playing a bit of a game of chicken here, as both sides, they're going to drop Shelly, try and escort her into that tower crash. Jojipion trading in the mid lane yet again. Rift Herald down bot side. Evil Geniuses will just get some plates for this. Kenvy's here, so low chance that Evil Geniuses actually hard commit onto anything. And there they go. Walking it in, getting the plates, now walking back towards the dragon. And if they want to start this up, I mean, they do still have Pryo bot side. Kenvy's actually on the Krugs, and they spot him out. So Contracts could look to start this Infernal Dragon. Has not yet, and will not. Just takes the scuttle and backs away. I think they want to see members of 100 Thieves show on the bot turret once again before they go for this. Also, Jojo Pion is somewhat low mana. I think they're going to give away the blue buff uh, to the mid laner of EG here. As he will secure that one for himself. Contracts going to continue the power farm. Doesn't want to give up his own tempo for the dragon, as I guess they realize that 
maybe with the spike they want to hit, a mountain soul or a soul wouldn't really impact them. It's going to be either ocean or cloud, so that's not the best roll. So, citing the weave, the dragon up on the map. Try and get some gold elsewhere. Nasty's going to have trouble crashing this wave. We're losing the trade to Tony Top yet again. Tony Top's about to have his flash available, holding that repost for the flawless duet. Not used, so... That's a trade of ultimate for Flash. Well done by Tony Top. And the bot turret falls too. So Evil Genius is getting leads, but can be sneaking the dragon away from over the wall. Evil Geniuses will not spot this. I, I think EG, both teams are somewhat content with the trade going on right now. EG, they get the early gold. They now have their one item power spikes on all their champions. One that's very powerful for the Blanc and Vera specifically. Well, 100 Thieves with uh, the two dragons they have in their hands now. They have the option as the game goes on to kind of push and pull EG, force them to fight those. And if they are able to win that 1v1 matchup in the top lane, it could become difficult for EG as the push and pull of the map. I think 100 Thieves uh, looking to get more resources later and get this Ezreal to scale into the game. As that is the big scaling difference on the side of both these squads. The Ezreal will be much more powerful at the two, three item spikes than Varus, who is really hitting a stride once he completes that mirror mana. But we do see the scaling for Evil Geniuses in this Viora, in this Viego, and we've also talked about it for the LeBlanc. Oh, we get a replay right here. Does Poom steal no this? <gasps> oh, Poom, you dirty feather. dog. That's a valuable feather coming in. Shout out to our wonderful observers for catching that one for us. Get a little Didn't bit of a replay notice. in the downtime as uh, can be. Uh-oh. Approaching the top side here, misses the Sonic Wave on a Mystiques. But Mystiques goes back in, gets a double knockout, buying time here for Contracts. A 1v1 Ryoma ults away. Ryoma didn't expect that though, flash the wall thinking of getting engaged on more. So no flash for Ryoma. Evil Genius says they don't have that much aggression though, as they will and back off, and that's Rift Herald taken. And look at the map, Tony Top, he's solo bot. We talked so much about this volatile top lane matchup, getting more resources into that split pusher. Very good for uh, both teams, EG. Focusing that more. Tenacity will go down and pick up uh, the rest of this way, but Jojo Peon's trailing. They might go for a play. All right, Tenacity. Can you hold on right now? The repose used by Tony Top as a grand challenge. It's Here issued. Jojo Peon diving under turret. Tenacity with the lifesteal, though. He's dancing around. Oh, he gets oh, the oh. play again. Taking down Tony Top. And Jojo Peon in some trouble now. Has to run away. Luger chasing him down. Mystic shot. Flash answered by Jojo Peon. He's out of there. But what a play from Tenacity. Again, you just cannot dive this man. This guy's just too good at the Rowia. And when you have a wave, when you're able to dance through the wave, just like Tenacity was able to do here, it's really difficult to land that dive. Let's check this out once again. He sidesteps the stun and the attack speeds, though, from Fiora. As Jojo Pion, he commits, but the double alt hits. He's able to use, uh, looks to be just the wave to heal. And oh my goodness. Just wow. watching him weave in auto attacks in between all those cues, it, it's so fun to watch Tenacity, who has mastered this champion to a degree that uh, maybe not anyone else on the server has. But Tenacity has done it, and it's fun to watch him pull that out in a high-stakes game as both these teams playing for their playoff lives and the all-important seeding as Hunter Thieves trying to maintain that top two seed. Blade of the Rune King completed here for Tenacity, giving him extra healing as well in those kinds of situations, but not even a mythic. Hasn't even gotten towards that. The Rift Herald dropped in the mid lane here. 100 Thieves Academy will crack that turret. Their first of the game. Evil Geniuses had already taken that bottom turret. But now answering it back. There's still a thousand gold behind, but with even turrets, with two dragons up in the lead, it feels like 100 Thieves are winning this. They're going to set up on Tony Top yet again, as can be. Use the control ward for stacks. They're going on the Fiora. Tony Top's got to be very careful. Was not ready for that Dragon's Rage. Has to flash away. Reposting the Flawless Duet. Oh. And he might be out of there. Rioma's looking to cut him off at the pass. But Tony Top with the mobility of a Fiora is out safely. Under Thieves. Kenvi doesn't want to let him go. Chasing him all the way under the turret. Commits the flash. And doesn't find the kill. Meanwhile, Topside contracts. Very far forward here. Takes a Blast Cone. Ooh. Doesn't have the Good ultimate. Jojo Pion over the wall. Lands the chains on the Poom. Lockdown's there. Can Mystique show up in time? Poom pops the quickness to run away. And Evil Geniuses do not find a kill. Really good Rakan play from Poom there as manages to sidestep the stun coming out from Contracts, then pops the quickness to cancel the distortion uh, from Jojo as 
these mechanical plays, uh, the micro plays coming out between both these teams, so important in securing these victories as a lot of volatile champions were taken, and now we're going to have to see if 100 Thieves can reset in time to contest this dragon. This would be soul point for them. They got lucky and rolled Ocean Soul, and they have really mid-river uh, control. Team Nuke is having to answer, and Tenacity shoving in this bot lane. Ryoma might be setting up. They might look for a pick and then snowball that into an objective. We're going to have to see if 100 Thieves decide to go for that, but instead it's all about mid-river control. Looks like they're going to shift the priority there. Use that bot lane shove to try and take this third dragon as EG. Dojo STP, but I don't know where yeah. he can go. Not a lot of wards to look at. Team Luke in some trouble here. Ooh. Ultimate used by Ralea misses. But that's flash out of Team Luke. The evil geniuses do not have flash on their AD carry for this dragon fight, which means we're not even going to look for it. They're pushed all the way to the top jungle. 100 Thieves, they didn't need the fight. They just wanted to push back evil geniuses while Kenvi takes the objective. This will put them on Dragon Soul Point. And they're one dragon away from Ocean Soul. That is massive for this team comp. I don't think Tony Top can look for the steal. He's posturing aggressive, but Kennedy does pick it up. Yeah, there's no way Tony Top has a 900 damage burst. As good sidestep from Ryoma might have saved his life. Not the second oh, one. Two Jojo chains. Pion, big damage as Contracts gets the kill. Nice pickup for the geniuses. Not respecting the two chains there from Jojo as. Syndra ends up falling. Hunter Thieves have no response, and EG, they give up the dragon, but now that's a 2.5k gold lead in their pockets, Kengus, so at least they find the trade, make a play happen, and Jojo Pion might be sprinting towards that second item death cap. Sure looks like it for the LeBlanc. Almost there, as double needlessly large rod. And even though we got the dragon stacking for the Thieves, we do still have the gold lead for Evil Geniuses after that turret take topside, after the kill topside. It's now two and a half a thousand gold in their favor. A lot of that on that LeBlanc, but Tony Top has been struggling here in the 1-1 one -one matchup against Tenacity. Stuff. Throws out the grand challenge, has the repost, but Tenacity still winning the trades. Boom joins in, but look at this, Jojo Pyun, fine time. <laughs> Kidding me with the mechanical play. Dragon's Rage into Sonic Wave. Picks up a kill onto Tony Top. Now zero and three on the Fiora. 100 Thieves are not worried about this top lane pick. They have been outplaying Tony Top left, right, and center. It's so fun watching Tenacity and Kenvi just attack the top lane as... Oh, Kenvi might be in trouble. Maybe they can get the pick here. Kenvi does take a lot of damage as Contracts with another kill now. Two and one on the Viego. Hits the reset. But 100 Thieves do successfully retreat back to their turret here. Man, it's just so back and forward right now, Cubby. It's like both of these teams waiting on the knife's edge. Both of them willing to go for these plays. And neither one fully getting a uh, grasp on this game. It's just the Dragon stacking versus the Gold League, which do you favor more. But the Thieves, they're getting a turret topside. Uh -oh. Engage here, Mystiques. On to Tenacity in a lot of trouble. Can't get over the wall. That's a shutdown for Contracts. Good find from EG. It was a good play from Tenacity to stick around, take that red buff, but... Staying in the jungle, greeting that positioning, ends up getting punished as Ryoma uh, has access to teleport, but sees what all of his teammates are doing, says, you know what, I'm going to take this one for myself, but EG, they trade up, that's more gold in the inner turret, as Jojo Pion has really been funneled by EG here, and it should be a death cap in plenty of time for this next dragon, he should have it on this base, and that means that this LeBlanc is going to be very scary for the rest of the game, because... That death cap, it, it's a very expensive item to complete. It's kind of a power trough while you're getting the two needlessly large rods to get it, but it means that the rest of your items scale harder as the game goes on and you get extra AP. So this the is going to be very powerful. And if Jojo Pion hits that level 16, that's a ton of poke that 100 Thieves are going to have difficulty dealing with. There it is, completed with the stopwatch as well. Jojo Pion ready for this next fight. We also see double items picked up for contracts, so two item power spikes on the two key carries here for Evil Geniuses. Team Luke getting close-ish to that power spike too with the Muramana being fully stacked. They also have the inside track here of this bear and it's 23 minutes into the game. Evil Geniuses, if they can find a couple picks, they could actually look to take this one. They have this death brush. They throw the change of corruption on the Pumbla, get him down, just blow him up. The poor 400 Thieves dead, but Woo! it's traded. Insane burst out of Ryoba and Luger. Mystiques was not expecting that. Yeah, that all up. Mystiques didn't see that one coming, and it's an even trade. What was a beautiful setup from EG it gets luckily answered by 100 Thieves as they're trying to keep control of this map, and one minute out for this Dragon Kangas. 
This is the gamba that EG took. They gave that third dragon because they wanted to make sure that Jojo Pion had that death cap. They funneled him like three turrets in the side veins on this LeBlanc, made sure he could get that death cap. And now, at this fourth dragon, the potential soul point for 100 Thieves, he is the one that got funneled. He needs to step up, find the right picks, and try and answer the Thieves who, with this Ocean Soul, yes, they're behind in goal, but this would be scaling for them for the rest of the game. be very difficult for EG to surmount as a lot of their comp relies on poke. Ocean Soul, pretty good at the gating now. Watch this for Mystiques. He's got Aftershock on. Stops Aftershock. Oh my Boom. goodness. He had Locket. He had ult. Both were available, just did not expect the Mystic Shot plus Scatter the Weak or oh, look combos. At Mystiques. Look at Mystiques. Oh, he's got the Hex Flash over the wall. Not finding the engage, though. Jojo Pion aggressively looking for poke with Team Luke as well. They're walking up so far forward, just baiting Poom in. Like, hey, hey, you going to engage on us? You going to come in? You going to jump at us as a squishy Rakan? Engage on the Kenby, get Flash out of Lee Sin. Now the re-engage coming in from the Thieves onto Mystiques, but now he's got that ultimate available. He's a tanky cow, but Team Luke jumped down. down. Luger chasing him down. Tony Top popping off in this team fight. The Fiora gets the grand challenge, and even the burst from Ryoma is not enough to kill him. He needs help of Tenacity. Contract's still alive, though, with the resets as a Viego. Over the wall, Jojo Pion gets oh. a double kill. He it's Jeff cast. Luger alive. Contract's on top of him. Goes into stasis. Luger with the Mystic Shot blocked by Mystiques. Luger can do Luger this. Luger keeping the thieves in this game. Evil Genie says too low health bars to do much about this. Yeah, Luger might be able to do this. EG, they have to base. Jojo has access to TP. And so I think TP is going to be the big difference, but Luger... Oh, does he go? Oh, oh he's thinking about it. It's close. Spotted contracts, but look at that. Now. Jojo Pion reset. He teleports back in here. That is Dragon to Evil Geniuses. As Jojo Pion jumps onto Luger, looks for the burst. But Poom is there to keep Luger safe with the heals, with the shields. Luger's going to look for the steal. He's over the wall. True shot barrage, not enough. Contracts gets the Dragon. <laughs> Contracts almost lost his life for that as well. As uh, For now, EG, the gambit pays off. They prevent Ocean Soul with that fight. Major props to Tony Top, who gets the grand challenge as Puma went down with the counter engage. As 100 Thieves, they blow a lot of early sums into the Alistar. And I think Luger chasing down Team Luke might have been a mistake on the back half of this fight because his DPS is much needed. It's gone. And while his DPS is gone, the rest of the Thieves just get melted at the hands of Tony Top and Jojo Pion. He gets the kill there, but yeah, we see Tony Top as this Fiora doing massive damage onto Ryoma, onto everybody on the side of 100 Thieves. And then Tenacity does his best to stay alive. They almost get contracts here, but he is able to get over that wall. Jojo Pion following oh. up. And like the health bars of Evil oh. Genie says, you're right, if Luger had been with him the whole time, that's just like one Mystic Shot onto each of them. That's the differential. That Mystic Shot from Luger on Jojo Pion, he was trying to guess the Shadow Mystic Pit on oh, a half boom. second. Oh, boom. Hard chunked out right there. Mystique's frontlining yet again as this cow knocks back the mid lane. Dead. Ryoma's dead. And Evil Genius is with a massive pickup to start off the fight. They can chase down Kenvy. They get the stun contracts. Doesn't have enough follow-up. The Thieves do successfully disengage through the top lane, but they lost Ryoma. They lost their mid laner. Evil Genius is not going to start up the Baron. They want to reset these waves instead. And this is the scary part, and one of the reasons that EG might have taken this LeBlanc Cinder matchup, because since they catapulted LeBlanc to level 16, to that early death cap, she outscales the Cinder. Uh, that level 16, the fact that you get access to a very low cooldown ultimate, that does so much damage with whatever ability the Blanc wants to double. It's going to be tough for 100 Thieves to deal with because they don't really have any initial hard engage to deal with it. Besides a maybe a scatter of the week from Ryoma or a quickness flash from Poom. And it's proving to be difficult as uh, once again this gambit of giving up that third dragon for EG continues to pay off. The fact they funneled early gold into the right members by giving up those objectives. It's really helped them bridge the gap into this game. The only concern they have is that the side lane... Still very heavily in favor of Tenacity as we see Tony Top down two levels and might be found oh, out Oh, is here. he just going to take on oh. Poom? No. Nope. Wait a minute. That's Poom walk by. Whoa, that was They close. might start the Baron. They're going to start the Baron off this. Baron has been started because they know that Poom is bot. They don't have any vision. Does 100 Thieves, do they guess this? Tony's not backed too, so he's going to catch a bot oh, wave. Oh, here they go. As teleport. As he's teleported into the pit right now. Evil Geniuses take a lot of damage from that shoot shot barrage. Response. Kenvy's here. He's it's looking down. for the engage, but Mystique's is there the to play goalie. Just knocks him up. Kicked into the pit. 
Hunter teams, they gotta take this fight now. Big scatter of the week from Rioma. Can he's in there? Can they take down Mystique? It's just oh, the boom. Alistair Tony Top, a monster in these team fights, and can be oh, knocked no. back into everybody for they Evil Genius. It. Tony Top is taken down. Rioma with Luger's help, they do a lot of damage from range, but they trade two for one at the end of the day. Not a trade that the thieves were looking for. I thought it was a good setup for the thieves. EG were chunked out. It was though health bars. Poom found a big engage, but. I think the split engages from Tenacity and Kenby, they panicked a little bit. They didn't go in together. They got isolated and picked off one by one by EG in the pit. So let's take a second look. Because Tenacity goes in and Kenby follows up, but it, it's a little bit split off from Luger and Ryoma. And despite the Ooh. big engage from Poom, everyone lives on top of the Grand Challenge because Tenacity got isolated early. Yeah. So the Diego resets come in. Ryoma's only able to get one with that huge scatter of the week. And EG walk out with Baron, walk out with a team fight victory, and pull off the heist against the Thieves. That is exactly why some people roll their eyes when you say Fiora, split pusher, can team fight. You're like, yeah, right. How does Fiora team fight? That is how. That grand challenge keeping everybody alive, healing them up in the pit there. When all these Syndra balls were coming in, the Mystic shots as well. But Evil Geniuses now with Baron with a 5,000 gold lead. They're about to bring it to the Thieves here. Team Luke's got to be careful, though. Realm is over the wall. Puma as well. And Team Luke, uh, one misstep could cost them the game here. But man, Evil Genius has played EG. such a good game. We got contracts here now. Contracts just have to use the W to get out. They need to maintain river control. Once again, this Ocean Soul Gambit comes up every five minutes. Going to try and rely Ooh. on the poke from Jojo, Pion, and Varus to zone off Hunter Thieves as Hunter Thieves. They are behind quite a bit of gold and a Baron buff at the moment. ZG gonna bully their way in with empowered minion waves and more stats on their shoulders. As Hunter Thieves are forced to go bot and oh no contracts. contracts! Oh he no! Gets he gets knocked oh, up. No. Oh no! And dead. Now Tony Top in trouble. Nasty jumps on top of him, but the reengage coming from Evil Geniuses. The grand challenge yet again, keeping Evil Geniuses in this. The burst from Fiora plus Varus from range plus LeBlanc from range is just insane. So this is a tough decision for the Thieves because the jungler is down, but it's a 4v4, but EG have Jojo Pion, have Varus up. And so they're, they're going to try and walk into the choke and take this Ocean Dragon with their smite, but they're going to get poked out heavily as they go for this play. They have to go fast, though, before the members of EG Look at Jojo Pion, he just oh, there it is. Kenvi. Yeah, so much for your jungler, Thieves. I know you wanted yep. a dragon, but probably not the best bet now. Evil Geniuses with that pick. They can stick on this objective. They can just take it themselves. And funneling Jojo Pion for EG, giving up that third dragon has paid off tenfold for them. As Jojo Pion, off that last base, got a BM book and now has 18 pages in it. As the 16-year-old's helping carry his academy team to a victory. That's another ocean dragon going over, another soul denied from 100 Thieves. They continue to fall behind in this game. This lead for Jojo Pion is absolutely insane here. Three items with the Morellas, or yeah, the Morellas along with the uh, the BM book, as you call it here. Essentially, four item power spike hasn't even used the stopwatch. Has had that since that Rabadons was picked up a full item and a half ago. Wow, this performance from the geniuses is a thing of beauty. We know that they got it in the tank, and they're showing us exactly what they got us. Tenacity, oh. one v one in contracts right now. Tony Top's there, but you got to get on top of Tenacity. Grand challenge issued. Kenby's joined in. Tony Top could be in some trouble right now, but he's out healing Tenacity for now. But he gets picked. Tenacity gets the outplay and the kill. Tony Top going down. Not ideal for geniuses. And it feels like that's the last point of power on the rift for the thieves. The fact that Tenacity. Still ahead in this solo lane matchup as Tony Top has dropped a lot of waves to try and help EG contest over these big objectives. Make sure they have river control. Make sure they can prevent the Ocean Soul. It has given Tenacity time to catch up as he has been winning the matchup for the majority of the game. And I think that's the way that the Thieves can play their way back into this one. Can they keep on getting picks? Can they play around their powerful young top laner playing his best champion? As Kenby and Tenacity, the two prospects that Hunter Thieves have heavily invested in since Hunter Next, work together, take down the top inner turret, and Aurelia continues to get ahead. Now it's four to six in the turret trades here. The fact that the Thieves haven't lost their base, they're holding onto these inhibitor turrets. Nothing's mm -hmm. cracked that can't be recovered from. They're still in this game. 4K and, and, behind, yeah. still on Dragon Soul Point. They are making Evil Geniuses work for this.
And we've talked a lot about scaling from both of these teams, and it's the point where Ezreal is starting to get a little bit more yeah. powerful than the Varus. Uh, once that Sorelda's Grudge comes through, that's a lot of utility and damage that gets on the Ezreal. And the Banshee's Veil for Ryoma is going to really help protect him from some of this LeBlanc poke. Of course, you get to neutralize one of the abilities, but also that increased magic resist should help Syndra quite a bit in this matchup. As 100 Thieves, they still find themselves behind. I, I still would rather be in the state that EG is in at this point of the game, Ooh. but they're trying their best to come back as Contracts just sneaks out of there. As the ultimate's burned for the crowd. Watch for Ryoma here. He sees e or Tony Top. Tony Top does not path towards the Syndra. 100 Thieves get a pick. Aaron's on the table here in 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. That would be a massive time to do it. Same thing for the Geniuses. It's about fighting for this mid priority right now. We do see more wards okay. placed for Evil Geniuses on the top half of the map currently, and they are sweeping it out, so they will realize that this is not spotted. 100 Thieves have not had an opportunity to get in here, but there is one control ward that they could teleport to. They gotta watch that for Tenacity. Realm over the wall. It's a stun on the contract. Jojo Pion trading back into Luger every time. Jojo Pion is like, I am aiming for that Ezreal. That yeah. means Luger's Luger, gotta play very careful. He has healing, but he doesn't have access to magic resist uh, and won't in this build for a while unless he opts for a hex drinker of sorts for his last item. As Tassi was fixing side waves, has now chosen to join the team. As of course, we talked about Tony Top seeding a lot of waves. He's going to get Flame Horizon as EG have been following there with the Blanc. Tony Top has been grouped. As JoJo fixes that bot wave, now 100 Thieves, they have an angle where they have a one man advantage for a little bit. Not able to find the engage, and the posturing around mid lane will continue as both these monster objectives are so important for each of these teams. Ooh, 100 Thieves just get the goal. turret. Yeah. Now they engage onto contracts, and actually not finding the fall of this duet, but surprising to see Evil Geniuses just give that one over. Jojo Pion was not in a position to actually answer, and 100 Thieves saying, okay, well, you can push topside, uh -oh. we're just going to go mid. Team Luke has to flash. Unfortunate there, now Tenacity jumping on him, saying, hey, that's got him. no flash, AD carry, Kenby picks up the kill, Evil Genius is trying to answer back, but Poom doesn't go down, maybe they can get Kenby, Jojo Pion's doing <laughs> some damage to him, it is traded back, but they also lose Tony Top, one for two trade in favor of 100 Thieves, but losing their jungler means that they can't really push for too much more. Oh, Contracts, does he find him? Oh. He sees him. They got vision. He goes over the resets for Contracts. He gets another kill out of Poom. That is massive for Evil Geniuses. That greedy base is punishing Jojo Pion. He can push hard now. There's nothing stopping him. As Ryoma is low mana, he's fishing for the chains, fishing for the binds, but not able to find anything. As... Oh, Contracts. Does he want uh -oh. Tenacity? Doesn't hit the stun. Oh, tenacity does get out. And EG, they once again, they have to reset. That wait kill on the Poom might be very important for them as this Ocean Dragon, once again, is on the Rift. It is Ocean Soul for 100 Thieves. The big difference in this one is that they get Team Nukes Flash, and once he steps back in, Kenvy and Tenacity, they group up, they burn everything, they find the Varus, take him down immediately with a nice engage. And the only thing that keeps this fight in favor of EG is that Contracts with some wait fight heroics. Able to find a bonus member, Poom, as... Recall was a little bit greedy coming out from the young support for 100 Thieves Academy. And also the fact that Jojo Pion is the real threat. It isn't actually oh Team Luke as the Varus. It's Jojo Pion behind. doing most of this damage. There's the teleport coming oh, from Evil Genius. He's trying to catch out Kenby right now. The Lee Sin flashes to the right. Juking out Contracts. How much more mobility does he have in the tank? Dragon's Rage back. Contracts buffers it with the ultimate Heartbreaker. Kenby's going down. He jumps to the Dragon, healing up off of it. But there's no escape. The team will look to trade for the Baron. And Evil Geniuses, they're already on the Dragon. Do they just give this over? They get the Dragon. Jojo Pion's looking for this. There's no smite for 100 Thieves. They got to keep Jojo Pion out of this hit right now. He steals oh! it! Jojo! Jojo Pion, are you kidding me? What can't this mid laner do? Carrying no the way. team through the kills, through the objectives. And that's going to be two objectives over to Evil Geniuses. They can push for this mid inhibitor turret. That breaks the backs of 100 Thieves. That's a Baron. They're committing TPs. They're looking to potentially end the game here, Kangas. What a play from JoJo onto the block as he's looking for more. It's still five members strong for Evil Geniuses. Kenvy's got 10 more Kenby's seconds on the death timers. Evil Geniuses might look for the end. They force the engage. There they go. The turret mistakes with the engage, and they blow up. Boom! Evil Geniuses might it's have just safe. done it. 
traded back, though. Ryoma does a lot of damage. They take down Mystiques. They take down Tony. The thieves are not going silently into the night. They will fight and scream as they beat back evil geniuses from their Nexus turret. Tenacity, he overextends. Team Blue picks up the kill. Can goes Golden. Trying to stay alive. Trying to get onto the back line. He can't kill them. Jojo Pion still alive. A double kill to Team Blue. And that might just do it. Ryoma back to the fountain. Luger as well. Evil Genius is with three strong. They have the Baron Bob. Yeah, kill the wave. There's one more Nexus turret. Ryoma and Luger. Can they make the 2v3 happen? The scatter Ryoma. of the week. Massive That's damage one. on the team. Luke Jojo Pion's looking for it. Boom. If he can just lock down Jojo Pion. They got it. They There's got him. It's for 100 Thieves. Oh, what a crazy set of plays is EG. They try to end the game. They have that advantage, but they couldn't pull it off in the end as Luger, Ryoma, Poom. Pull off some late game heroics to save that one. And what a crazy series of events, Kangas, that all started with 100 Thieves going for the Baron Gambit. And Kenvi wasn't there in time, so they isolate him. They take the dragon. 100 Thieves go for the Baron trade. And oh, 200 Ooh. HP. Jojo Pion burn his flash to save the Baron. Almost win the game for EG as with the chunks, with the health bars being down and the Baron powered recalls, they think they can TP. They think they can end the game right now. But let's just watch. This game was so close to going watch down. 100 Ryoma. Thieves, they somehow managed to save it. Yeah. Ryoma saves this so hard. Gets out of here. Massive oh, no damage on the return. Up. Boom! Just takes down Tony Top. And the fact that Ryoma and Luger stay alive, these were the most important members for the Thieves. And the GA from Tenacity clutch as well. I know that he goes down later, but this does buy a lot of time. I think the big difference for the rest of this fight is that EG are fighting in a mini wave. None of the Mystic shots could get through these minions, and Luger's damage... Just wasn't there as Kenvi and Tenacity, the young top duo for 100 Thieves, just push a little bit too far. And Ryoma living with 50 health, that's yeah. so important for 100 Thieves because he saves the game yet again. It's because he lives here that 100 Thieves don't lose. If this was only Luger, yeah, game over. Ryoma gets back to the fountain, heals back up. We don't get to see the final play right there because we're back onto the map. Wow, this game is going the distance, Cubby. 40 minutes, 45 seconds on the clock. Dragon's sole point for both teams right now. That's up in a minute 45. It, it's really just going to come down to one late game team fight. That's going to be the play from each of these teams as uh, it's going to be all in for the Ocean Soul. And I feel like at this point of the game, we've already hot harped on it enough, but it's Andres. all eyes on Jojo Pion. All oh, eyes geez. have to be on the young mid of EG. As Luger on the Ezreal at this point, you are somewhat of a god at level 18 as real. Oh, 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 oh. oh, the body blocking of the chains. Oh my goodness. It's Jojo Pion versus Luger at this point. He can like one shot pretty much anybody. If he gets a full yeah. combo on a single member, save maybe Tenacity or Kenvi, you're going to get that kill. And the only reason I say maybe not Kenvi is kind of bru bruiser, but also has that GA. But yeah, more yeah, armor index into 400 Thieves than Magic Resist. So Jojo Pion is just blowing people up here like watch this oh it actually doesn't hit anything on tonight never mind don't, don't watch that one watch the next Attaboy, one tenacity yeah. yeah using the q to get over the chains a uh, good play coming out from him as eg advantage goes to them they have the super creep so this enables them to get mid lane control and 100 thieves are going to really have to focus to try and fix this side wave they're fixing the top wave and this is just such a tough state of the game for them because jojo peon and team Lu over these walls into in the fog of war can fire as much poke as they want but Cubby, it goes both ways battle. jojo pionka mm -hmm. one shot so can ryoma so eg they cannot get complacent here they cannot get caught up by ryoma oh, contracts looks like a flank here but boom locking him down not the play contracts ga goes into guardian angel fought some time can be low on health contracts do you survive ryoma gets the kill what a stop watch it up for tenacity he stays alive oh, he goes down as well team luke gets it tony top he's just going for the game end are you kidding me is this how it ends tenacity got team luke the nexus focused by it's all the members of the thieves he's not gonna get it there's no way but he bought time. He distracted three members of the and they get Ocean so the Dragon. Mystiques and Jojo Pyun could get the kills, but still advantage to the thieves. Tenacity took down Team Luke. That's the key. Is Jojo Pyun? Oh no way! Oh, no way! Oh, the massive burst. That's a GA. Another GA. A hundred thieves. Uh, once again, we talked about the uphill battle, fighting into the fog of war. They can't face check. They need to use Mystic Shots to guess where EG's at. Now here goes Jojo. Over the wall onto Luger. It's a massive burst of damage. Oh, has oh. a flash to True Shot Barrage. That would have been enough. That would have killed him. 
That's Flash down. Luger's looking for more. Engage on the Mystiques. Boom. Wrapping around for Jojo Pune. And Mystiques just sacrificed himself. Jojo Pune will trade it back. <laughs> so support for support. But oh my god. Luger's back onto the dragon. I think this is going to the 100 Thieves. They got Ocean Soul. It, it, oh. it only took them an extra 20 minutes. But they managed to secure it. And what a performance. What individual performances we're seeing from Jojo Pyun and Luger. Honorable mentions to Ryoma. As this game, all hell has broken loose, Kangas. Any macros being thrown out the window. It's all about who can execute these team fights better at this point. And how can you get this the block off the map? Because honestly, that's a decision that, or something we have to start talking about now as Jojo 9, 1, and 10 on this champion. Just one tapping anyone who looks at him funny. Surprised that Jojo Pitt hasn't sold boots and gone for a, another completed item. You gotta have enough gold by this point. Can you get two death caps? Like, why not? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, you you I mean, get honestly, a clone. That's another place to put the cap, right? As yeah. under these, they, they went over the crab. They're sneaking oh. this EG. They just found out they're on it. They know that they're on it now, but they're getting mid priority first. I don't think Dude, that they're they expecting don't. 100 okay, Thieves to commit. They just checked it. They just checked it. Yeah, but they only have this three members here. Ryoma. Mystique's too far back. I think that this might just go over to them. Jojo Pune does not get the seal this time. The Thieves successfully take Baron. And they're going to get out. Oh, two big objectives over to 100 Thieves in a row. Evil Geniuses, they brought him so close, but now struggling to close it out. The most important part of the game, now only 2k ahead, and at this point, it doesn't matter. It's in the late game. Ryoma might just one-shot Mystique through oh the my goodness. Ultimate. Unbreakable my ass, Ryoma says, I gotcha, man. Massive damage, and that's how 5v4 here. Evil Genius is heavily on the back foot. I don't know what they can do to defend. I think they lose an inhib. Are, are they, they might be going for the back door. Uh, there is an open inhibitor and no Nexus turrets. Tenacity is the only person that's defending Hunter Thieves. They're sniffing this out. They have Baron Empowered Recalls to respond. As they're going to keep Luger and Kenvi here, and Look this is going to get really funky down the game. Tenacity yeah. on 1v2 right now. He's got the Guardian Angel looking by a lot of time. He might even just take it. Boom's joined in now, too. I'm casting the picture in picture because that's where the action's happening right now. And Evil Geniuses, they re engage back through they it. They trade. trades on the contracts, but it's traded back and forward. Top laner for Jungler. Mid lane. It doesn't matter for Evil Genius as they save their inhibitor. 100 these backed and they lose theirs. I think everyone's going to get out A-OK. -okay. EG, they are down a man as Mystique's is still in the death chamber for getting one tapped by Ryoma. And Kangas with the last week of Academy, a lot of playoff implications on the line. EG need a couple wins to secure their spot in Academy playoffs. 100 Thieves looking to secure that second seed. As this game just continues to get crazier and Jojo. crazier. No, no, oh, no he's Jojo. getting picked right now. The most important part of the game. And that's a shutdown. That's a 64 second death timer. There's a lot that the Thieves can do with that. Jo do they just go for the end? Yeah, Jojo was the only thing keeping 100 Thieves from wiping the rest of the oh, game. No. Now Syndra, no one can touch Syndra. In this game, it's all that's Ryoma. Amazing. She finds another scatter of the week. Big damage. Oh, that true shot barrage is insane. All right, they got the Banshees. Snatchy's still dead, I... but he's got teleport. He's about to spawn. I think 100 Thieves are going for the game right now. Back into Evil Genius's base with the Contract Baron card minions. Save it. Teleport from Tenacity. These turrets are melting so fast. Evil Geniuses have to find an engage. Contract goes from the hero plan to Ryoma. Stasis is used. Mystique. Not even frontline. Wait, Tony's back dooring. Tony's back dooring. Contracts. They will racing down everybody. Team Luke as well. The Nexus is focused, and Hundred Thieves will bounce back and take Game One in this best of two series. Staying tied with TS or uh, Team Liquid for that top buy into playoffs. What a game, Cubby. <laughs> I, in the nine weeks that we've been doing Academy, I, I've only seen one or two games that can compete with the craziness that just broke out there. As, you know, we teased out what was on the line, the history between these two teams. This was the third and fourth place match that we had in Proving Grounds. With nine out of the ten players competing, DeMonte was in for Ryoma at that point. And man, did that game one deliver as I think everyone in that game had moments where there was game-saving plays across the map. There was trades, decisions being made, and in the end... It just went down to a bar fight. It was all about what happened in the 5v5, and 100 Thieves barely edged them out of the end thanks to some heroics from Ryoma and Luger. And Jojo Pion kept them in the game for the entire time up Oof, until that crucial that Baron steal in the yeah. sideline. The Baron steal, such an incredible performance. And it's so sad to think about how well he played the entire game, but one mistake, one position error in the late game, 
and hundred thieves come back from it. My goodness. We're going to have to send it to a break, Cubby. My voice has only one game left in it, but thankfully we only have one more game to go. I cannot wait to see what they bring us for game number two. You're not going to miss it either. So be right back after this for EGA versus 100 Thieves A, the deciding game here after this break.